Hello, clinical practice supervisors in our middle schools and high schools, our P12 clinical practice educators. I'm David Sullivan Losey, and I'm here with video directions to simplify the assessment of the clinical practice, the student teachers that have been with you for uh, nearly a complete semester. Uh, I want to start with uh, honoring all the people that are on this title slide, uh, Dr. Griggs in social studies, Dr. Hollenbeck in science, Dr. Zolman in mathematics, and Dr. Bailey in English language arts and coordinator of secondary education unit for their hard work. And I also want to apologize to you, the teachers in the field, uh, for the lack of directions when you were asked to complete the midterm assessment online. I intended to get the video and directions to you, and at the last minute, and when, on the day that they needed to go out, I was called to the hospital for one of my sons in an emergency situation. So people pitched in and did the best that they could do in getting them out to you, uh, but the directions were a little sparse. So we aim and I aim to rectify that today, so let's get right to it and see if we can make this a little simpler for you. We're concerned about accreditation, as all of the public K-12 schools are in Indiana and the other states. Your concerns are with the Indiana Department of Education meeting their accreditation procedures. And for us at IU Southeast and higher education, it's the accreditation procedures of CAPE, the Council for Accreditation of Educational Programs or Professionals. And CAPE and much of the literature and, and the journal magazines at this point recognize, and we do too, the critical importance of you, the clinical practice educators who are in the field helping our student teachers, that they're gaining more in this semester than perhaps any semester in their life because we've moved from only observing or being left on their own to co-teaching, and that co-teaching model is showing great uh, results and great promise for the future. So uh, that's why we're here, and that's what we hope to continue to do to help make the highest quality, the best new teachers that we can get here in Southern Indiana and all across the country. So for everyone, it was on that title slide, and everyone at IUS Southeast School of Education, thank you for being a clinical practice educator this semester, and we hope you'll do it again. We have an online tool that's meant to simplify uh, your procedures and our collection, staying away from the paper, and the directions here uh, for you. The online assessment is asking you to rank your um, P12, your clinical practice person from IUS who's in uh, grades five through 12 at this point, rank them with in relationship to the 10 in-task standards, the golden standards of teacher performance. So that's one set. A second set is the Indiana teacher developmental standards. We're asking you to rank their performance with those. And finally, we're asking you to rank their performance in this semester with the IUS Southeast Dispositions or the character statements. And those are critically important from things like making decisions based upon data to having ethical practice to being committed to all students learning. We know that dispositions are critical to our profession. So we're asking your opinion in all three of these areas so the steps in the assessment process, first of all, I've attached to the email a list of the three areas, I, the 10 in-task in -task teacher standards, the uh, seven Indiana teacher developmental standards, and, and the nine IUS dispositions. So if you want to print those out or have them with you while you're doing the online survey, you can do that but those will come up on their own page on the on online survey for you. So either way that you wanna go with that. Once you're ready, if you click the link that came in the email, it'll take you directly to uh, IU Secure Server and what you click and what you type into the form will be 
logged onto that secure server and then accessible uh, to the faculty at IU to better assist our students in their growth towards becoming a high quality teacher. You can do this survey on a desktop computer, on a laptop computer, on a tablet, an iPad, a Samsung tablet, an iPhone, an Android phone, almost anything electronic. We wanted to make it e easy and accessible to you so any of those devices will work. We're going to ask for uh, the same key rankings uh, on all of the assessment standards that we ask of you. There's actually 26. There's 10 NTAS standards, there's seven Indiana standards, and there's nine um, Indiana or IUS dispositions. So hopefully that comes up to 26, last time I counted. And uh, we're going to use the same four rankings that you see right here on the slide. The lowest level of performance by our, our people will be unacceptable. And that means that their performance in your classroom and working with your students was consistently failing and meeting the, your expectations and the expectations of the profession. We hope no one is there, but if they are and they deserve that, put it down. The next rank up is acceptable, and that means that the students are meeting the expectations, but still have some inconsistency for a new teacher, someone who's just starting in the profession. We expect our people to be there. We expect several acceptable rankings for uh, the number of students that we have out. That's fine. They're beginning. The next level up is proficient, which is a higher level, and those for ranking there, they're meeting all the expectations of each of the st of each standard or each disposition with consistency and skill, much like being ready to go out and have their first year of teaching in their own classroom. Of course, getting professional development and assistance from experienced teachers, but you know, ready. They're ready to begin. And then the highest level throughout all of these, and it'll be the same, will be advanced. And that means that our students have ex uh, demonstrated excellence in the standards and the different dispositions, and that you're ranking with them with that excellent, which indicates their future in education is very bright. So we'll be using the same four possibilities on each of the 26 questions. So here I have a sample page from the online form. And you can see at the top, we have a key. And the key has the four rankings, unacceptable, acceptable, proficient, and advanced. And then those same definitions that I talked about just on the slide before this. And that would be on every page. So you don't, you don't lose track of it. It'll be there. And then on every page, there will be one standard or one disposition. The first one is the first in-task standard about learner development. I don't want to read this thing to you, uh, but you can see it starts, the teacher understands how learners grow and develop. In this assessment, our student teachers, our clinical practice candidates, our teacher candidates are referred to as teachers in this assessment. Then below each standard or disposition are some sub points which give a broader or, or a more specific even explanation to the standard. You can see the first one regularly assessing individual and group performance in order to design. The middle one starts creating developmentally appropriate instruction. And the third one starts collaborating with families, communities, and colleagues. So that gives you a little more idea about what the standard is asking. And then right under that, that's where you click your response. Those rectangles across the bottom, unacceptable, acceptable, proficient, and advanced. And then on every one of the 26 standards or disposition, there is a comment, comment box. You do not have to fill out 26 comment boxes. We put them there in case there's something that you wanted to tell us either as a strength or a weakness or a growth area or just something of interest. We have them there for you to use, but it's always optional, although we value everything that you tell us in text, uh, very valuable. On every one of the 26, there's a text box there, box there. Use them as you see appropriate, but again, they're not required. When you get to the bottom of, of the survey, you're going to click Submit, but let's don't go there yet. So I'm asking that 
the survey be completed by April the 24th. We know it's a short window between wrapping up student teaching clinical practice and getting this form in. That's what we're shooting for because we will be talking with all of the clinical practice candidates and, and we would want to share this information. So April 24th, if, if you can click before or on April 24th, that will be great. It is your choice whether you want to share your survey with the clinical candidate or not. It's completely up to you. You might want to have them sit right beside you as you do it on your desktop computer or your iPad. You don't have to. Uh, every one of us are going to complete in the university the exact same form that you do. In other words, Dr. Bradford will be, or Griggs will be completing one for the social studies uh, student teachers, the clinical practice people, and so on in each of the four content areas. So they're going to end up with two assessments, one from the school clinical P12 clinical educator and one from the academic clinical educator. When, the, when we have the exit interview, we'll share both results with them. Uh, if you list something that is a strength or a weakness or a growth area, we'll share that with them. We'll share what we have to say. And again, we're looking to have them grow to get stronger in our profession. Bottom line of this assessment and why it's critically important and why hopefully by April 24th, this is decision point four the last decision point before recommending them for licensure. They've been through one, decision point one, two, and three, and now they're at the end of, of their journey with the university, and we need to know if they should be um, asked to move forward towards licensure and take the cost of the exams they need to take, or should they get more uh, development or more classes here. So we're going to share all that with them in a spirit of collaboration and growth towards our profession. You, what, you, what you submit and what you give us is very valuable. So that really is um, the close, and I want to thank you again uh, for the work that you do with our students because you help, and exactly right here, molding high quality new teachers is very much appreciated. We do have the teacher shortage in Indiana and, and we want to get good people out there to help the P-12 students grow. If you need help or if you want to talk with me in any way that I can help you, I'm in charge of the clinical experience overall. Uh, you can do that. There's my e two email addresses. The Gmail address rings on my phone, so it's always in my pocket. I check my IUS, IUS email once a day, so if you want to get to me quicker, use the Gmail or the IUS either one. There's my cell phone number. You're more than welcome to text me or call me. I'll be glad to get back to you, so just let me know. I want to make it as painless, this process as painless for you as possible and as valuable for you and our students as possible. Well, thank you very much for all you do to help your students and our students. It's much appreciated. That's all, folks. Okay, see ya. Bye.